This is The Chris Berry Show. Expert information on wealth, estate, and tax planning for the second half of life. Information that you can understand. Here's your host, Chris Berry. Welcome, everyone. So this week, just like every week, we're going to start with that positive focus, something positive that happened uh, the previous week. And I do this with my family as we go around at dinner time. We'll share something positive that happened during the day. Uh, even our team meetings, we do a, a firm team meeting every Monday. Uh, we go around and do a positive focus. Uh, and I think it's a great way to start the show, too, just starting off on the right foot with something positive. So for me, uh, this past week, something positive was that my son Ryan, who's in fourth grade, uh, he's in Cub Scouts, so he's a Weeblo. Uh, my son Ryan, he completed his uh, Space Derby. So uh, the Space Derby is you get basically a wood block, and then out of that you carve a spaceship, and there's a couple things you can attach, some wings and stuff like that. And then they end up racing them. And uh, so this year he painted his uh, completely red, so it's like a red rocket, uh, and it turned out really good. And unfortunately, he he was sick, and he wasn't able to uh, uh, ra- uh, actually be at the race for his uh, for the space derby, which was unfortunate. So that's not a positive focus. But uh, I just love that. I think this is probably the third year of us doing it, and and he's loving it. He's he's always excited. But it's an interesting lesson is that you can put all this preparation and planning in place, but sometimes th- life throws you a curveball. Uh, he wasn't planning on being sick, but uh, with the weather changes and everything, it's certainly something that's going around. And similarly with retirement planning and planning for the second half of life. It's one thing to have a plan, but understand things can change. Life can throw you a curveball. Maybe it's a a long-term care uh, issue. Maybe it's a stroke or something like that. Or maybe there's been market volatility. And a lot of the planning that we do at the firm is really protecting against some of those unforeseen circumstances, what ifs, those what ifs uh, if they were to happen. Uh, What if we were to have a stroke and need long-term care? Do you have a plan in place for that? Uh, And we look to things like statistics, too, to take this into account. We know that one in two individuals will need nursing home care at some point. So what strategies are you taking to uh, protect yourself from the eight to $12,000 a month, the devastating cost of long-term care? Uh, And if you're just putting your head in the sand, then it's going to be a complete surprise and you're not going to have a a plan in place uh, if one of those things were to happen. So it's just an interesting lesson, a a, a, a parallel with uh, my son and all the work and effort he put in. Uh, Unfortunately, he he ended up being sick and and wasn't able to participate, but still, uh, sometimes it's the journey that's the important part. And so for us, uh, working together to help him uh, put together that space derby and just his love for, uh, continuing love for Cub Scouts, uh, that's my positive focus. As a dad, I can't really ask for much more than that. So this week on the show, we're going to talk about some end-of-year tax planning ideas, Uh, And we're going to talk about uh, tax-free income sources. So we're going to talk about some taxes, which uh, isn't always the most exciting thing, but it's one of those things that we can certainly control these days. Uh, We're going to talk about some taxes and and then some scams that have been going around, uh, and it's unfortunate. Uh, And so that's going to be our show this week. So first, I wanted to uh, talk about some tax-free income ideas. So really, at the end of the day, there's four ways that we can generate tax-free income in retirement. So tax-free income, why is this important? Because no one wants to pay any more tax than they need to. And too often, when clients are coming to my office, a majority of their wealth, if not almost all of it, is in qualified accounts in pre-tax accounts. Think of your 401ks, your IRAs, 403bs, 457s, uh, and I'm talking about the traditional versions of these. So the problem with that is you have all this money in these qualified accounts, pre-tax dollars, and what happens in retirement, you're going to have to start drawing on these accounts. And too often people have all their money in tax-deferred accounts, and when you pull the money out, you have to keep in mind of how that's taxed. So any money you pull out of an IRA or a 401k or 457, if it's a traditional, not a Roth, then it's going to get taxed at ordinary income rates. 
And ordinary income rates could be anywhere from 0, 10, 12%, uh, 22, 24, 32, 35, 37%, depending on the amount of income you have coming in. So what people don't understand is they like having these big pre-tax accounts where they haven't paid any income tax, but understand in addition to growing uh, this, this money inside of an IRA, you're also growing your tax bill that you have to pay to the government, to Uncle Sam. So one of the things we can't control is we can't control what the market's going to do, but we can control when and how we're going to pay taxes. So let me ask you this question, and we've talked about this before, but in the future, do you think taxes are going up or down? Well, most people say taxes are going to go up across the board, uh, depending on the presidential election. Well, that and also that's the way taxes, the tax law currently is. Right now, we're operating under the uh, 2018 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which is going to last to 2025. And so what that Tax Cuts and Jobs Act did is uh, it basically reduced taxes across the board with 3 to 4%, depending on your tax bracket. For example, right now, if you're at the 12% tax bracket, in 2025, it's going to jump up to uh, 15%. If you're at 22, it's going to jump to 25. If you're at 24, it's going to jump to 28. So just by paying the taxes sooner rather than later, you could save maybe 3 to 4%, which could be thousands upon thousands of dollars, just by choosing when and how, uh, how you pay the taxes. And so what the strategy is, because we always like to start with what are your goals and then talk about strategy and then get into tools. So the strategy is to get to a more tax-efficient retirement. So as you're getting near retirement age, look to see if you can move any money from qualified accounts, from pre-tax accounts, from taxable accounts, moving it to tax-free. So now uh, the money can grow tax-free, and when you pull the money out, you're not taxed. It doesn't affect your ordinary income rate. And this becomes important as you get near retirement and as you get to claiming Social Security and and having Medicare, because all of these things are related to taxes and how much taxes you're paying, uh, what's your adjusted gross income at the end of the day. Because that's going to determine whether Social Security gets taxed, that's going to determine the premium for your Medicare payments, all of these things are interrelated. And so taxes, it can bite you in multiple ways. And I, I'm going to open up and tell you I have a little bit of a bias. And, and my bias is that I'd rather spend my money and I'd rather have my clients spend their money uh, than having the government spend their money. So if we can put more money in your pocket versus leaving it to the government, uh, I think we're doing good. And so at the end of the day, we have four sources of tax-free income. So the strategy is to try to get as much of our wealth into these four areas as possible or to set things up in such a way that we can take advantage of these four ways. Uh, two of them are, are asset classes, uh, and two of them are uh, income sources that if you structure things properly, uh, then you can receive this income potentially tax-free. So the first source of tax-free income, and this one's pretty obvious, this is a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k. So you have your traditional IRAs uh, and you have your Roth IRAs. A traditional IRA is money that is uh, pre-tax, meaning you haven't paid any income tax. And then when you pull the money out, including the growth or any principal you pull out of there, uh, you're going to have to pay tax on that, and that's going to be at ordinary income rates. Now, we compare this to uh, a Roth IRA. Now, a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k is post-tax money, so money that you've already paid income tax on that now grows tax-free. And so all the growth and whenever you take that money out, all of that's going to be tax-free money. And now a lot of employers have Roth 401ks which are similar to a 401k in that there's an employer-sponsored plan, uh, meaning it's through your employer and your employer can match. And you always take that match. You always take that free money. Uh, never, uh, you always take free money. You don't want to leave that money on the table. 
But now with the Roth 401k, what they can do is, or what you can do is you can save money at your employer and the money that you contribute grows tax free inside of a Roth. Now the money that the employer throws in as part of the match does still have to go into the traditional 401k. But still, if, if you can stock more money away that grows tax-free, uh, that might be something to explore. So we have the Roth IRAs and the Roth 401ks. That's the first source of tax-free income. Uh, and that's typically where we start. Now there's limits on what you can do to contribute to a Roth IRA uh, while you're uh, working. Uh, and it's basically between six to seven thousand dollars, depending on your age. Uh, you can sock that away inside of a Roth IRA. If there's a Roth 401k, then you have larger, uh, more space to to save money inside of that Roth 401k. Now, with the Roth IRA, there's also some income limitations on it as well, where if you have too much income coming in, um, potentially that Roth IRA will not be a viable option. So there are some limits on contributing to a Roth IRA. But there's another way to get money inside of a Roth IRA, and it's not through contributions, it's through conversions. And this is a, a question that's come up a lot of times in our workshops that we do about once a week at one of our different locations, uh, whether it's Brighton, Ann Arbor, Bloomfield Hills, Novi, or Livonia. Uh, but Roth conversions. So there's no uh, limit on how much you can put into a Roth conversion. And what a Roth conversion is, is taking money from the traditional IRA, moving it into the Roth IRA, and then paying the taxes. Now, ideally, the money that's used to pay the taxes is coming from something that's already been taxed. So you don't wanna just withhold the money from the traditional IRA to do the Roth conversion, because you're not fully funding that Roth. Um, but the important point here is that you can put as much as you want into a Roth conversion. So if you have traditional IRA money, uh, you can convert as, as much as you want to. There's no cap on the amount you want to convert. Uh, but there is taxes that have to be paid. So you either have to withhold the taxes or a better way to handle that Roth conversion is ideally you have that money sitting in savings uh, to pay the tax. So uh, you can use taxable funds uh, to put more into that tax-free growth vehicle of the Roth. So uh, that's two ways to get money inside of a Roth. One is through Roth IRA contributions. Well, I guess three ways. Roth IRA contributions, Roth 401k uh, contributions uh, at an employer, or Roth conversions. So those are three ways to create tax-free income uh, through the Roth, which is the first of our four ways, uh, four sources of tax-free income you can have in retirement. And that's the first one that typically we look to is the Roth. And that's probably the simplest. Uh, it's basically the inversion of a traditional IRA. And so what I would invite you, no matter how old you are, is think about getting into some type of tax planning uh, or tax diversification strategy. Because again, too often when I sit down with uh, recent retirees or soon to uh, retire individuals, they have all their money sitting in qualified accounts, pre-tax dollars. This is money that has never been taxed. So think of different ways to try to move money from those pre-tax accounts to tax-free accounts. Uh, and that might be Roth conversions. Uh, if you're working currently, see if your employer offers a Roth 401k option so that you stop contributing to what Ed Slot calls the retirement savings uh, tax time bomb uh, that's sitting in those RMDs. Uh, and one thing, uh, before we take a, the short break here, uh, I do want to offer up a, a short two-page guide to any listeners of the, the Chris Berry Show. So what we put together is a, a report, and it's more like a checklist, actually. And we have a one, uh, two versions of this report. And basically what it is is issues you should consider when reviewing your 2018 tax return. So these are things, some end-of-year kind of tax planning considerations 
what should you be looking at uh, in this last month here coming up? Uh, things to think about uh, as you're uh, finalizing uh, this tax year. So these are some end of year uh, tax decisions that we can make. Uh, and we have one for uh, retirees and one for individuals who are working. So this is our 2019, what issues should I consider when reviewing my last year's tax return? So think of this as end of year tax planning. And we're happy to send you out this uh, uh, two page guide. Uh, it's a checklist. Uh, all you have to do is uh, give us a call, 810-355-2584 and give us uh, either your email address or address you want us to send this out to, or you can email us anytime at askchris at thechrisberryshow.com, and just in the subject line, just put end of year tax planning, and we'll get a, that guide out to you. It's a handy two-page checklist, and I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, so if you do want to think about getting into some tax planning, uh, one of the things with tax planning is you need to do it uh, prior to the end of the year. Uh, so there's certain things you can do. So right now, with a lot of our clients, we're talking to them about Roth conversions, moving money out of those pre-tax accounts, paying the tax, and now moving it into uh, a vehicle that grows tax-free. Or, uh, and this is setting up what our second source of tax-free income could be in retirement, uh, we're moving money from uh, pre-tax accounts to now moving it into life insurance. So life insurance is a form, can be a source of tax-free income in retirement if it's structured properly. And what we'll do, uh, continuing this conversation, is we'll talk about life insurance as an asset class, which can be kind of surprising to a lot of people. But stick with us as we continue the conversation. If you or a loved one is facing long-term care costs, make sure you talk with certified elder law attorney Chris Berry from the Elder Care Firm, like Kevin Prokop did. My mother, who's like 90 years old, she needed to um, qualify for Medicaid insurance. I thought it was a good idea to hire a professional to help us go through that process. And that's why we hired the Elder Care Firm. I would recommend them. They're very patient in this delicate situation, dealing with an elderly parent who might not understand what's going on completely. And they were very patient with us and kind, and um, I would definitely recommend them. Hello, I'm attorney Chris Berry. I can help you develop the best plan possible. Call 810-214-3800 to schedule a free 15-minute phone consultation or to reserve your seat at our next workshop. The Elder Care Firm is here to help you and your family find solutions. Visit theelderCareFirm.com today or call 810-214-3800. So we're talking about tax-free income, and we started off talking about Roth conversions and Roth IRAs and how Roths are a source of tax-free income. Next, we're going to talk about life insurance. And life insurance, it could be surprising to think about this as an asset class, but in reality it is. Now, there's two types of life insurance. We have term life insurance, and then we also have permanent life insurance. Uh, term life insurance, think of it like this. Uh, I have two young kids right now, uh, my daughter Madison and my son Ryan. They're nine and six. Uh, and I have uh, life insurance. And if my youngest were to pass away, if I were to pass away before my youngest turns 25, uh, then the good news is there's a death benefit going out. The bad news, of course, is I passed away. So that's pretty bad news. But if I were to live past my youngest turning 25, the good news is I'm still alive. Bad news is that life insurance money uh, that we paid to the insurance company uh, is gone, right? So that's term insurance. Now we compare that to permanent insurance. And I thought, you know what, let me explain how I'm using permanent insurance as part of my uh, my portfolio here, uh, and that'll explain how it could work in, in almost any analysis. So right now, uh, I'm looking at uh, saving for my kids' college. So uh, I'm not 
planning on a lot of federal aid for this, so I'm saving money into a 529. Uh, and that grows tax-free. Uh, you're not going to use that for retirement, of course, but you can use that for education. So the money I'm saving for into that 529, that grows tax-free, which that for me is magic words. I want money that grows tax-free. And so with this money that's growing tax-free, it is in the market. And so the market goes up and down. And if a 2008 were to happen right as I'm about to pay for my kid's college education, I don't want to have to go to them and say, sorry, Ryan and Maddie, instead of getting four years, you're only getting two years, right? So I want some diversification. I want some diversification uh, from that market volatility. So about half of the money that I'm saving, in addition to going into the 529s, is also going into permanent life insurance. Uh, more specifically, it's going into an index universal life insurance. And so there is a death benefit. Now, you might have heard of uh, buy term and invest the rest. Uh, you might have heard that phrase. And yeah, if you're just looking for a strict uh, death benefit, that might be the way to go. Uh, but I'm looking for more than a death benefit. So I do have a death benefit. So if I were to pass away, there is money going to my family. But really what I'm looking at with this IUL is the money that I contribute to that will grow tax-free. So that sounds like a Roth so far, but uh, the money that's saved inside of that policy, uh, as it grows tax-free, it's tied to an index. So it has the power of indexing. So what that means is, uh, let's say if the market goes up 10%, we might get 5%. Uh, if the market goes down 10%, you don't lose anything. Uh, so that's just an example of how indexing might work. So what it does is it helps kind of uh, protect against the volatility of the market. So if a 2008 happens right before I'm about to pay for my kid's college education, at least I've diversified some of that risk away and I can pull the money out maybe through uh, loans or from the permanent insurance so that I can continue, so I can have some protections to pay for my kid's college education. Now, that said, I'm going to continue to put into this policy even after my kids graduate because the money that I contribute to this is, again, growing tax-free, but in retirement, it's going to be another source where I can pull the money from that policy uh, potentially tax-free. Uh, which, again, is similar to a Roth in that now we've created another leg of tax-free income in retirement. And then that death benefit that is for sure important while I'm younger uh, actually doubles as a long-term care benefit. So if we put in $500,000 or if we're shooting for a $500,000 death benefit, then uh, you could add a rider on where now if you need long-term care, it could pay out 2% per month which if you have a $500,000 death benefit, that could be $10,000 a month now for long-term care. So permanent life insurance, that is another option for tax-free uh, income. So first of all, we've talked about the Roths, whether it's a Roth 401k or Roth IRA, that's money that you can pull out tax-free. And then second, we talked about life insurance as an asset class, which can be a little bit surprising to people. Uh, but it, it truly can, if the policy is set up uh, in such a way, then that money can grow tax-free and you can pull it out uh, through a variety of different ways from that policy. For example, taking loans uh, to create another source of tax-free retirement income. Now, the third potential source of tax-free income is Social Security. Now, you might be thinking, well, Chris, I thought Social Security was always taxed, or that I've heard differing uh, opinions on this. Well, Social Security may or may not get taxed, and really what it depends on is what's called provisional income. Provisional income. So bear with me, this is a little bit complicated here, but there's a calculation to determine how much of your Social Security will be taxed. And the way it works is they take half of your Social Security. So if you were to get $2,000 a month, uh, multiply that by 12, and then divide that by 2, that's going to be $12,000. Uh, 
So if your Social Security is for the year is 24000 well, half of that is going to be 12000 So they take half of your provisional income, and on top of that, they add in any other sources of income. So if you have a pension, if you have RMDs, or if you're working, uh, that's added to provisional income. And basically, the way it works is if, we, if you're a married couple making over roughly $44,000 in provisional income, so again, half of your Social Security plus any other income sources, including municipal bonds. Like a lot of people think municipal bonds are tax-free, where they're not because they count towards your provisional income. So they count towards whether your Social Security will get taxed. So they're not truly tax-free. So you add up half of your Social Security plus any other sources of income, so RMDs, uh, interest from bonds, et cetera, wages, add that up. And if you're a married couple with more than $44,000 of provisional income, then your Social Security will, 85% of your Social Security will get taxed. Now, it's not an 85% tax on your Social Security. It's saying that 85% of your Social Security will now get uh, brought over, and now 85% of your Social Security will uh, be poured on to any other ordinary income you have. So if you can keep your provisional income as low as possible in retirement, then maybe your Social Security will not get taxed. So here's a strategy. So let's say... Uh, let's say you retire at age 62, okay? Do you have to claim Social Security right away? The answer is no, okay? Claiming Social Security and retirement are not married together. Uh, you can do those at different times. So let's say you retire at 62, you don't claim Social Security, and let's assume there is not a pension. Well, if you don't claim Social Security, how are you going to cover your expenses? because you're gonna have expenses at this point, right? So how do we cover those? Well, this is where maybe what we do is we pull money from those IRAs, pull money from the tax deferred accounts, paying the income tax now, because our wages have went away and our income bracket has dropped, now might be an opportune time to pull money from those tax deferred accounts to cover our expenses. But on top of that, not only should we pulling money should we be pulling money from those tax deferred accounts for our expenses, covering that income gap, but also we should be pulling money from those qualified accounts, those pre-tax accounts, paying the income tax and moving it into tax-free income sources, moving it into something that can grow tax-free like Roths and permanent life insurance. And so if we were to engage in that practice, from the time we retire, say at age 62, uh, until age 70, when now at 70 and a half, you have to take out your required minimum distributions. Uh, at 70, you will have claimed Social Security. Well, if you're able to move enough money out of those tax deferred accounts and we can keep your RMDs low enough, then your Social Security may not be taxed because it's based on provisional income. So if we can limit the amounts or sources of income in retirement, then we could potentially have a social security benefit that we get to enjoy tax-free, rather than being like a majority of people who have to pay income tax on their social security. And then taking it one step further, so we've talked about Roths, we've talked about life insurance, we've talked about social security as a potential tax-free income source. Then the last one is, and this might be very surprising to a lot of you, is required minimum distributions. So that money that you have to take out of those pre-tax accounts, guess what? If you structure things properly, then that money you take out could be tax-free. So again, let me say that again. The money you pull out as RMDs from your IRAs could be tax-free. Let that sink in for a second. Now, I might be scratching your head like, how in the world can you do that? Well, we have this thing called the standard deduction right now. And it's been raised, or, or it's a little bit higher due to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. But basically, if we have a married couple, you have about $24,000 worth of uh, standard deduction. So what that means is, is you could have income up to $24,000 and... Uh, 
as long as it's less than that $24,000, you don't pay any income tax. So what that means is those RMDs, if you were to take out RMDs and your RMDs are below $24,000 and you don't have any other sources of income, then those RMDs could come out tax-free. So not only is there Social Security tax-free, your required minimum distributions are tax-free, you could pull money from life insurance tax-free, and then the Roths are tax-free. Because what happens is once you turn 70 and a half, you have to start taking out your RMDs, required minimum distributions. And at 70 and a half, the amount you have to take out is about 3.65%. So you have to take out 3.65%. And so if you were to, and I'll just do some rough math here, let's say you have $600,000 of IRA money. And let's say you don't have any other sources of income. Um, so $600,000 worth of IRA money, you don't have any sources of income, your RMD might be uh, 21000 but because that's below the standard deduction of 24000 that money that you pull out of that RMD could come out tax-free. So the money goes in tax-free, and then the money could come out tax-free. That seems pretty cool to me, and I think it is as well. Now, is this available to everyone? The answer is no. For example, if you already pulled the trigger on the pension, so if your employer offered you a pension, well, guess what? You're always going to have that pension, and you're always going to be taxed on that pension. So this is another reason why a lot of people lean towards taking the lump sum buyout because they can take more control. They can take control of their tax planning because if you do just opt and take that pension without analyzing all the options, understand you're always going to be taxed on it. So you're always going to have this income. But if you're to take that pension, take that lump sum pension buyout, and now roll it over into your 401k or IRA, and then we engage in tax planning uh, from now until the time you turn 70, uh, then by the time you reach age 70, we could get you into a much more efficient tax bracket or even the 0% tax bracket. And uh, there's a really good resource on this. And it's a book I've talked about before. Uh, a big fan of his work, and it's a book called The Power of Zero. It's uh, written by a gentleman named David McKnight. Uh, and uh, it's a really good book, and in fact, I, I've trained with David and his team, uh, and I'm uh, actually flying out to Arizona, uh, when is it, the beginning of the year, January, uh, to train with David uh, McKnight as well as Ed Slot. Most people have heard of Ed Slot. Uh, he's been on NPR. Uh, and really just working on these tax-efficient retirement planning strategies. Um, but he wrote this book called The Power of Zero that talks about getting to the 0% tax bracket. And keep in mind, it's not available to everyone because if you have pensions or uh, both spouses have a lot of Social Security or something like that, you might not always be able to get there. But the principles hold true uh, with the idea that you're trying to get to the most tax-efficient retirement possible. And that's why we put together uh, a handy guide that we're offering to the listeners of The Chris Berry Show that talks about uh, what issues should I consider when reviewing uh, my 2018 tax return uh, as it relates to end-of-year planning for 2019. Uh, and what we've done is, is we put together, it uh, looks like about 20 different items, uh, things to review when you're taking a look at last year's tax return and you're trying to engage in end-of-year tax planning for 2019. So if you do want that handy guide, we'll send it out to you at no cost. And we have one for uh, retirees as well as one for someone who's still working. Uh, so just shoot us an email at askchris at thechrisberryshow.com. Uh, and uh, we can email that out to you. Just let us know if you're still working or if you're a retiree so we know which guide to send you. And stick with us as we continue the conversation talking about tax-efficient retirement planning, uh, and we'll get into some of the scams uh, to protect yourself from. If you're looking for guidance in estate planning, make sure you talk with certified elder law attorney Chris Berry from the elder care firm in Brighton, like Brian Measel and his family did. For quite a long time, I worked on my parents trying to get them to establish an estate plan or a will or a trust, and they had absolutely nothing in place. We had set a, a first initial meeting with Chris on a Monday with him, and 
that Friday afternoon, my, my mom had passed away and we had nothing in place. So we kept our meeting, obviously with a heavy heart and Chris made us feel very comfortable and assured. My dad is a person who doesn't care for politicians or attorneys <laughs> and he really likes Chris. Thought it was a fantastic fit for us and, and our, our circumstance. Hello, I'm attorney Chris Berry. The elder care firm is here to help you and your family find solutions. Call us today. Protect your assets from probate, long-term care costs, the IRS, and get the governmental benefits you deserve. Visit TheElderCareFirm.com today or call 810-214-3800. So we're talking tax-efficient retirement, and there's four sources of tax-free income in retirement. And whether you're still working, whether you're retired, or retiring soon, already retired. Uh, the idea is to try to move money or create some tax diversification where we don't have all of our money sitting in the taxable or tax deferred bucket. Because when you pull money from that tax deferred bucket or if you're selling stocks and you have to worry about capital gains, that's gonna be additional tax. And a lot of people think taxes have to go up in the future. So if that's the case, if you're one of those people that think taxes have to go up in the future, then you should be engaging in a strategy to try to move money from the taxable buckets, from the uh, tax deferred bucket to the tax free bucket. And looking at creating as many sources of tax free income as possible in the future. So those four uh, categories or four sources of tax free income in retirement are first of all the Roth. So we have the Roth IRA and the Roth 401k. Uh, the common denominator with those is that the money you put into it uh, is post-tax dollars, so you've already paid the income tax, and then any growth grows tax-free. Uh, the second, and this is where it's a little bit confusing, but it is a source of tax-free income, is uh, life insurance. So we're not talking about term life insurance, we're talking about permanent life insurance. Uh, more specifically, something that's really appealing to a lot of our clients because they want that tax-free growth, it's called index universal life insurance. So it's a type of life insurance that's permanent, that looks to what the market does, and if the market goes up, it participates in the upside of the market. If the market goes down, you don't lose anything. So it's a nice... Uh, nice along with the Roth. So if you think of the Roth as money growing in the market uh, with uh, dealing with market volatility, the index universal life can take away some of that volatility. And then if you've structured your plan correctly, and this is, it really takes planning to be able to do this. So this isn't just uh, having an a h and block or even a CPA just prepare last year's taxes. Really, it takes planning to be able to get to a place where now your Social Security will not be taxed. And to be honest, it's not available for everyone. Uh, but if you structure things properly, you can get to uh, a point where now with your uh, provisional income, which is the calculation to determine whether your Social Security will get taxed, uh, with your provisional income, if you can get that uh, as low as possible, uh, then maybe your Social Security will not get taxed. And uh, so if, if I were to look at a kind of tax-efficient retirement planning, uh, Roths are, are easy. That's kind of the baseline. Uh, and then adding on some complexity would be looking at permanent life insurance. Uh, so think of that as a little more complicated. So uh, with my kids being in fourth and in first grade right now, I'm, I'm kind of in that mindset of, and it's interesting uh, watching my son, who's obviously more advanced than my daughter, just because he's been alive longer and learned more in school and in fourth grade versus first grade. I uh, think of Roths as kind of first grade tax efficient planning. It's pretty straightforward, easy to understand. Uh, second grade planning, uh, or maybe even third grade, because it, it is a lot more complicated to be looking at permanent life insurance. That's kind of the next level of tax efficient planning. And then uh, fourth grade, or, or one step above that, and this isn't even available to everyone, would be getting to your Social Security, so that comes out tax free. Take some real planning to try to uh, structure your assets in such a way that you don't have your Social Security taxed. Uh, and then uh, the Holy Grail. 
uh, where if you probably have accomplished the first three, uh, the holy grail of tax-efficient uh, retirement planning is getting to a position where your RMDs are now tax-free. So those required minimum distributions from your IRAs uh, that went in pre-tax, if you can pull them out uh, in retirement uh, without paying any tax because you've gotten your standard deduction uh, higher than your RMDs, uh, you, you get the gold star. You, you, you knocked it out of the park. Uh, maybe a, a better analogy would be looking at a baseball. I wasn't a big fan of baseball, but I, I could see a baseball analogy here. So if you're looking at tax-efficient retirement planning, uh, converting Roths that, that are getting to a Roth, uh, that's like hitting a single. That's good. It's good. A lot of people can do that. Uh, life insurance would be, uh, think of batting a double, getting to second base. It's, it's harder. You don't get those as often. Uh, getting your Social Security tax-free, that's, that's a triple. So you just got to third base. And then a home run, if you can do all of this and, and then also get your RMDs tax-free, uh, well, you won the game. You won the tax-efficient game. You just hit a home run. So uh, I think that's probably a better analogy as it relates to uh, the levels of tax-free income than uh, first through fourth grade because, again, who likes going back to school? But I thought it would be helpful to share that. And, again, we created a little guide, uh, not necessarily uh, guaranteeing that you're going to get to a tax-free uh, retirement, uh, but a checklist of issues you should consider when you're reviewing uh, last year's tax return as you're doing and any end of year tax planning this year. Uh, and we have one for retirees as well as one for uh, individuals who are still working. Uh, things to look at, uh, ways to maybe save some tax. Uh, and I thought I'd, I'd go over a couple of those uh, real quick. So uh, for example, looking at the standard deduction, uh, did you receive the standard deduction of 12,000 or 24,000 uh, on form 1040 line nine? Uh, yes or no, and if so, consider bunching charitable contributions into one year or uh, bunching or accelerating uh, or prepaying certain expenses such as medical expenses or property taxes. Uh, the idea is we have a much larger standard deduction, so if you are going to itemize, it might make sense to itemize everything kind of all in one year. Uh, and, and we break this, uh, this guide into different issues, so that's a family issue. Uh, a lot of times we're looking at qualified plan issues, like are you 70 and a half or do you have an inherited IRA and you need to think about your required minimum distributions. Uh, are you 70 and a half? Did you do a qualified charitable distribution? Uh, that, that could be a, a topic of another radio show in itself. Uh, did you forget to take an RMD? So you might have a penalty. Uh, did you withdraw money from a non-deductible IRA? Did you take a non-qualified distribution from 529? So a bunch of just things to think about as you're kind of finishing up, uh, if you're looking at last year's taxes and, and finishing up the year, looking at any opportunities for tax planning in 2019. So if you do want that guide, uh, just reach out to us. Give us a call at 810-355-2584. Give us your email and address and tell us whether you're a retiree or working. Uh, and we'll get the right guide out to you. Or you can email us uh, anytime. Just email us at askchris at thechrisberryshow.com. Uh, in the subject line, put end of year tax planning and then let us know whether you're a retiree uh, or uh, are you still working. And we'll get the correct guide sent out to you. And again, we're, we're doing this because we like providing education. That's why we do the show. That's why we've written books on the topic. Uh, that's why we do weekly workshops. Now, the last thing I want to cover for this show, so uh, as if taxes were not depressing enough, I just want to talk about some of the scams that we've seen. And it's a sad thing. Uh, and so why this came up is actually I was interviewed by Metro Parent. Uh, they're putting together uh, an article on uh, senior scams or scams of affecting the elderly or retirees, and just some things that we've seen in the previous 15 years, uh, and things that are going around right now. So the big one is uh, the IRS scams. Uh, so initially, uh, and maybe you've gotten some of these calls, uh, I certainly have gotten some uh, actually more recently. I actually saved uh, one of the voicemails, I'll play it right here, uh, but they're threatening that you're under federal investigation from the IRS. 
uh, that if you don't uh, hand over like your social security number and everything, they're going to come after you. So I'm going to I'm going to play the voicemail, see if this sounds familiar. Maybe you've heard, gotten one of these too. Let's see if I can pull it up here with the magic of technology. So here we go. And before a magistrate, judge, or a grand jury for a federal criminal offense, this is the final attempt to reach you. Yeah, I probably can't hear it, but it's you've probably received one of those spam calls and. Uh, obviously, don't answer those. Don't respond to those. But you could see, especially if uh, um, you could see how it, it sounds intense, right? Like you don't want to mess around with that. But obviously, stay away from those. But the new thing we're seeing now is in addition to these phone calls, which, to be honest, half time, if I don't recognize a number anymore on my cell phone, I'm not, I'm not answering that phone. If it's important, they'll leave a message. And then if the message is something like that, that uh, – I need to get in front of a federal magistrate because my IRS leans, then obviously uh, it, it's a scam. But now what they're doing is the uh, individuals are receiving letters that look like they're from the IRS. Uh, so this is something that I haven't seen with my clients yet, but I, I've seen it. Uh, some of my colleagues have seen it. So you have to be very careful. And, and they're getting better and better at these things. And when I was interviewed with uh, Metro Parent, one of the things that I, I talked with them that really surprised me with regards to these scams is that once an individual falls for one of these, it seems like they just get bombarded by all these other kinds of scams, whether it's uh, trying to get money uh, via the mail, uh, and especially if, if you're a caregiver for someone or you're caring for someone who maybe has diminished capacity, uh, it's something you really have to keep an eye for because once you fall for one of these, uh, then it seems like the individual just gets bombarded uh, over and over and over again with more and more scams. Uh, and uh, the scams kind of fall along a continuum. And some things might not technically be scams, but... Uh, but once uh, individual kind of participates or, or donates to something, uh, a lot of times they're just going to get bombarded with this stuff. Um, so one example of this is uh, I had an individual. Uh, he was actually uh, uh, um, so individual who uh, had slightly diminished capacity. Who was diagnosed with dementia. Uh, he was an engineer. He managed the family money for a number of years. Uh, did really well. Um, he, he did his own investing and, and really did well. And uh, through their savings, through their investing, they build up a pretty darn nice, uh, nice size nest egg. Uh, but unfortunately, the dementia started affecting him. And the wife, she had never worked. She never balanced a checkbook. Uh, she just wasn't really involved in the finances. And, and you'd have a conversation with this gentleman, and it, and it seemed with it, it seemed good. But uh, just the way his dementia was affecting him, it just threw off his judgment just enough, spe specifically with uh, financial decision making. And so what happened is he ended up sending uh, via gift cards, uh, thinking this was an investment, about $300,000 out of the country uh, as part of these scams. And he was dead set that this was a good investment. Uh, that he was going to get his money back, uh, but unfortunately, it was it was just a scam. They're just milking him, uh, and the unfortunate part was that with the wife she didn't really have the financial wherewithal to to manage things or or to stop it, and so uh, that's when the daughter uh, kind of stepped in, and we were able to structure things uh, utilizing an a, a asset protection trust to protect the rest of their assets. Uh, he still had some of his kind of quote unquote play money for his investments because he was pr a very proud individual. Uh, but we were able to uh, protect a, a majority of the wealth so that he wouldn't fall for any more of these scams. Because uh, really, we needed to make sure that uh, also the the wife that she wasn't completely impoverished because of uh, his poor decision making and falling for these scams. But one thing that I remember is that just w once he kind of succumbed to this. Uh, and was on the hook, uh, their mailbox would just get bombarded with all kinds of uh, kind of scammy letters, uh, similar to those uh, IRS scam letters. So uh, it's something we're watching. Uh, so if you do get a letter from an IRS or a phone call from the IRS, uh, that seems to be the latest route that they're going trying to gather uh, personal data. So trying to keep that personal data 
uh, as private as as possible which especially in, in this society now with technology and everything um it's it seems like harder and harder to do uh, especially with technology where uh, you have your phone and you have Google and Siri and Amazon is always listening to every conversation. Uh, it's kind of funny. My wife and I, we're, we're actually trying to test something where uh, without turning on uh, on purpose any of these quote-unquote listening devices, uh, talking about a product that neither of us would uh, ever really be interested in or, or buy that we've never searched for in Google. Uh, but if you mentioned a bunch of times uh, when these devices are off to see if all of a sudden they start showing up in your your ads on Facebook or, or on Google or, or something like that. But uh, so we just tried it the other day and I haven't seen any ads for for the specific product. Uh, I don't I don't want to say what the product is because I don't want to demean it by any means. But uh, if all of a sudden I start seeing these things, then really they're, they're always listening. The government's always watching. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so I just wanted to bring your attention to some of those scams and also check out the uh, I think it might be in an upcoming issue of Metro Parent. Uh, we, we did a nice little phone interview uh, talking about some of the scams out there. So I just wanted to bring your attention to that. So a little bit of a uh, not the most fun episode is we spent uh uh, three quarters of the show talking about taxes that's that's never fun and then the last quarter or so uh talking about senior scams so uh the world is good there's good things out there but like i said just like with uh, my son when you have a plan sometimes uh you need to protect against things happening and things don't always work the way you want my son he wanted he spent a lot of time putting together uh, his uh, space derby uh, uh, rocket, but unfortunately he became sick, wasn't able to race it, uh, but we were able to get it in the race uh, even if he wasn't able to participate. Uh, similarly, uh, we need to protect ourselves from these scams. Uh, we need to look at ways to minimize the amount of taxes we pay. So we need to come up with a plan and, and make adjustments as we go, and, and that's what we do. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, this show. Uh, I enjoyed uh, sharing this information with you, opening up uh, what's happening in our firm and in my personal life. Make it a great week. I look to forward to talking to you next week. Take care. Learn more about Chris Berry and how he can help your family by visiting online at thechrisberryshow.com. That's thechrisberryshow.com. You can also call Chris Berry at 810-355-2584. That's 810-355-2584. This program content reflects the opinions of Chris Berry and his guests, not the elder care firm Prosperity Capital Advisors or the Castle Wealth Group, and is subject to change at any time without notice. Content provided herein is for informational purposes only and should not be used or construed as investment or legal advice or as a recommendation regarding the purchase or sale of any security or to follow any legal or tax strategy. There is no guarantee that the strategist's statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses which would reduce returns. All investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There's no guarantee that any investment plan or strategy will be successful. We recommend that you consult with a professional dedicated to your needs. This program is furnished by the Elder Care Firm.